Chapter 241 The Interrogation Harry, what? Go check on that fire. I will track down these intruders the elf mentioned. Harry told his mother. Lily was a bit hesitant for a moment, but then she knew her son could handle this by himself. Her priority should be to find her daughter. Okay, but be very careful, Harry. I'm going with you, Professor, Daphne said. She knew that if she went with Harry, she would only be a bother and get in the way. Lily and Daphne were guided to the back side of the hedge maze by a few senior students. Someone has burned their way out of the maze, Lily pointed out while looking at the hole in the shrubbery wall. Yes, we thought at first it was some student trying to be clever, but then we saw a large fire on that dirt path that goes around the castle. That looked like dark magic, Professor, a worried student said. Yes, and I noticed some guys with black cloaks running that way, right before the fire. Those were definitely not students, another one added. Okay, you, Lily pointed at one of the students. I want you to go inside and tell the headmaster everything that you saw. She then looked at the others. And the rest of you, I want you to gather the students here at the garden and bring them back inside the hall. Make sure no one leaves. The senior students went on their way, leaving Lily alone with Daphne. You should go back inside, too. No way, Professor. My sister is also missing. I'm not going anywhere without her. It may be dangerous. These black-robed individuals they mentioned. Lily already had a good idea of who they could be, given the current situation and Harry's worries about who could be behind this. I am not as defenseless as you think, Professor. I know what I am doing. A quick glance at her determined blue eyes was enough for Lily to realize that the girl was not going to back down. Very well, but stay close to me and do what I say. After Daphne gave her a nod of consent, the two of them hurried towards the dirt path where the students had seen the fire. Wait, there is something over there, Lily warned. Daphne, wand ready. Yes, Professor. There was a dark bundle at one side of the path. It was hard to tell what it was at first because the moon was not offering much light on that night. But when they got a bit closer and heard it moan in pain, they knew it was a person wearing a black cloak and lying on the ground. He appeared to be severely injured. Lily spotted several stains on the dirt that were probably blood. Hey, turn around. Slowly. Lily had her wand pointed at the man, ready to fire. Ugh, grug. The man managed to turn himself on his back. Lily spotted a wand in his hand and immediately fired a disarming charm at it. They both were now able to see the man's face, or more like they couldn't, because he was wearing a mask, a very familiar white mask. Lily had seen a few like this one before, a Death Eater, in Hogwarts. Her son's worries appeared to have been warranted after all. Daphne noticed that the wand from the Death Eater had fallen close to her feet, so she knelt down and picked it up. She gasped loudly when she saw the wand. She recognized it. This was certainly not the Death Eater's wand. Her eyes moved quickly to the man lying on the ground and managed to catch the moment when another wand appeared in his hand, likely from a hidden holster. Without hesitation, she made a fast wand motion. Expelliarmus! Arg! The man yelped in pain when the wand was ripped from his hand, breaking a couple of his fingers in the process. Lily glanced back at Daphne for a moment and nodded. Good one. Professor, look, Daphne showed Lily the wand she had picked up. Lily's face went a shade paler. She grabbed the wand from Daphne's hand to take a closer look. Her face contorted with rage as she turned to face the injured Death Eater. Where is she? What did you do to my daughter? This is her wand. Lily sent a pulse of wind that lifted the man in the air and pushed him against the rocky wall. He grunted in agony and fell back on the gore, Ound but refused to utter a single word. Oxio mask! Lily took the mask off his face, revealing a young man with blonde hair and very pale skin. I know him. That's Tobias Smith, Daphne exclaimed. He was in my house, graduated last year, Lily stared at him. A new recruit, they send children to do the dirty work now. She would normally show more compassion, but if this boy had hurt her daughter, there would be no mercy. Harry was not the only ruthless one in the family. The youngster opened his eyes with difficulty and looked at her. Lily noticed the large stain of blood on his side now and the fact that he was missing an arm. He is not going to last long. He lost too much blood already, Daphne pointed out. Lily's eyes were cold as she spoke. 
Then you better answer quickly, boy, if you want to live. Where are the girls? Chapter 242, A Cruel Grin. A cruel grin appeared on the boy's face. To death, my comrades must have, have, got them by, now. Lily's face went through many changes at that moment, but eventually went back to anger. I don't think so, Daphne said with conviction. Harry is here, he will. His eyes moved to Daphne and his smile disappeared. You, traitor, will die too, the Dark Lord, will, oh. He tried his best to keep his eyes open a bit longer, but was unable to continue. His body gave up. He's dead, Daphne realized. She had mixed feelings about this. She may not have liked this guy, but this was the first time someone died in front of her. Although Harry had been very close. Let's go. We can't waste time here, Lily gave the boy a look of disgust. She felt no pity for him at this moment. Even if his family influenced him, he still had to make many bad choices to get to this point. After all, her old friend Sirius had been not much different, growing up in the Black House, but he chose to not become like them and leave that family behind to become a better person. There is always a choice. After giving the dead young man a last glance, she turned around. We need to find those girls. She did not believe his words even for a moment. Lily was sure her daughter was alive. Aye, it's looking at us. Neville pointed at the golem with his shaking finger. He is not going to attack us, right? Ginny asked. No, it just spoke with Harry's voice. I think my brother sent it here to save us, Lyra said. The golem turned to them and advanced a few steps. Its eyes seemed to move to Lyra and then to her wounded legs. Protect the students. A voice came out of the construct again, but it was also Harry's voice. See? He is here to protect us, Lyra said. All of a sudden, they heard a loud pop sound that startled them. Missus! A house elf was now in front of them. Dobby? Lyra recognized the little creature. Missus is hurt. Dobby failed. Dobby is a bad elf. Tonight, he had been tasked to protect Lyra since Harry knew she was the most likely to do something stupid. But Dobby had lost track of her while they were in the maze and had just now been able to find her after they entered the castle. The poor elf started to panic while trying to pull something out of the small bag tied to his shoulders. Dobby, calm down. This is not your fault, Lyra said. That's your house elf? What is he doing at the school? Neville asked. I have no idea. Although, he is more like my brother's personal elf rather than my family house elf, Lyra understood that much at least. Here, missus. Dobby brought her a potion with some green liquid inside. Healing potion, high grade. Astoria commented. Potions were an important part of her family business, so she had been learning a lot about them and the ingredients used to create them for quite a while. Great, you are the best, Dobby. Lyra smiled and took the potion before applying some over the several cuts on her legs. The effect was immediately visible. She made sure to leave some and hand it over to Ginny. Here, put some on your shoulder. Ginny had been badly burned by that flame explosion from before. Lyra knew she was in a lot of pain, even if she didn't complain. Thanks. Ginny accepted the vial with a smile and poured the remnants of the potion over her burned shoulder. Where do we go now? Luna asked. Should we stay here or try to go back to the Great Hall? Neville added. Lyra stood up. She felt much better now. If we stay here, there may be more of them coming through here. But if we go to the Hall now, we could run into them, Ginny said. But no one knows we are here. If we stay, the only ones who will find us are the bad guys, Neville pointed out. We have him, Luna signaled at the golem. But is it actually going to protect us? Ginny wondered. Dobby, do you know anything about it? Did Harry really make it? Lyra asked the elf. Dobby shook his head. Dobby doesn't know. Fine, let's go to the hall then. Staying here in the Untra, ants just seems more dangerous, Lyra decided. They all agreed to that so they ventured up the stairs and went further into the castle. Tap, tap. The group kept glancing back as they walked. It really is following us, Neville said. How else is he going to protect us? Luna asked. It is following us, but I would still feel safer if I had my wand, said Lyra. Dobby will also protect the missus, the elf declared with confidence. Lyra chuckled. Thank you, Dobby. I feel safer now. I, I will also, you know, Neville stammered the words. Oh? Ginny gave Neville a side glance. There are a lot of blibbering humdingers flying over Neville's head, Luna pointed out. 
Just a few minutes after the group departed from the entrance, three large individuals came through the hole left behind by the broken door. I can smell a lot of blood here. The door has been completely destroyed. Yes, something happened here. The three large men wore simple pieces of wool clothing that barely covered their muscular torsos. Their bodies had copious amounts of hair, including their faces. This all combined gave the men a very feral and dangerous look. Sniff, sniff, oh, what do we have here? One of them moved his eyes towards the two dead men on the floor. Bloody hell, what a mess! 